justice with Judge Maybelline will be life because in everything we do, it involves the law. You came to court to testify about what you heard, what you saw, and what you know. She's fair. I don't have a hearing problem. This ear works good, this one works even better. She's firm. I'm not responsible for that ticket, and I'm not going to pay for it. Who says you're not going to pay for it? I make that decision, not you. She's honest. What do you have to say? All I have to Nothing. say. Nothing. <laughs> this is Justice with Judge Maybelline. Laura Shello is suing Dean Thomas White in the amount of $20,000. Ms. Shello claims the school her daughter attended changed their bathroom policy, and Mr. White refuses to refund the tuition she paid. Mr. White claims the contract that the plaintiff signed clearly states no refunds will be given no matter the circumstance. In the matter of Laura Shello? Correct versus Dean Thomas White. I understand that you're the mother of a student. Um, you want to ask for a refund of your $20,000 tuition because the rules changed at the school and the rules that you're not too happy with. That's correct. So tell me about it. We enrolled my daughter, Marissa, in the fall of last year at Wish Hope Academy. And at the time, we were aware of their policy of diversity, their embracing policy, which is part of the reason we wanted to enroll our daughter in the school. Uh, my husband is African American, Marissa is a mixed race child and had faced some prejudice in the last, had trouble making friends on some occasions. And we wanted, uh, we wanted a diverse and embracing school. And this is also a very prestigious school. It's very sought after. You actually have to have a referral in order to get in. So wow. we, we jumped through all the hoops. We went to all of the meet and greets, and we got her in, and we made the first payment for tuition, $25,000. And tell me, she's uh, in kindergarten? No, she's 13. Oh, oh okay, at least she's so middle she, school. <laughs> yes, so she, correct, so seventh grade. And her first year was going very well. She was making friends, doing very well in her classes, uh, star of the soccer team, uh, star of cross country, and everything was going great. And then the end of her semester rolled around, around December, they sent us a notification saying that if we were to pay early for next year's tuition, we would get a 20% discount, so a $5,000 discount. So this was substantial for us because mm -hmm. I myself am a social worker. My husband's a bank teller. We don't make a lot of money. And so it was tough enough for us to pay the tuition. And you paid $20,000 tuition per year? Correct. Wow. That's so, what you call a rental sacrifice. We wanted the best for our child. Mm -hmm. And so we actually took out a loan in order to make the early tuition payment and get the $5,000 discount. And we made the payment. And everything was going great. Marissa seemed happy at school. And then summer rolled around. And we started getting these flyers in the mail, different, you know, notifications. And one of them notified us of this new bathroom policy, which we had not been previously made aware of. And what was that? This bathroom policy essentially states that any boy or girl may choose which bathroom or locker room they would like to use based on the gender that they feel. And so it's the transgen transgender policy where the children correct. select or decide which uh, of the genders they identify with? That's correct. And my husband and myself being, having our own, you know, beliefs and convictions, we did not feel this was appropriate. We felt this would open the door to a pen potential abuse from other children. And so we called the school to verify. So we made sure that we understood what the policy was. And they told us that we could voice our opinion at a parent forum. And we did this. And we were treated with disrespect. We were scoffed at. They looked at me like I had five heads when I tried to voice my opinion. And so we were essentially. What do you mean they? Are you talking about the school or other parents? The school board and other parents. OK. And so we were treated as though our opinion was not valued, was not respected, and essentially ignored. And so, you know. If or that they disagreed with your opinion. How I about that? I suppose, yeah, you could see it. They disagreed. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, regardless, we did not feel that our opinion was heard. And lo and behold, three weeks into the school year, Marissa comes home from school very confused because a boy was in the girls' locker room while she was playing soccer. And so she was very confused by this. And so, Did you explain the policy? The policy was explained. They had a school assembly to explain the policy, yes. Okay. And so now what you want? I simply... I. 
because this policy was not in effect when we paid tuition, I would like a refund. Of, and I understand the tuition policy, that it's non-refundable. But if I had known, been made aware of this policy before I paid tuition, I would not have enrolled my daughter in the school. So I would like a refund of my tuition. OK. What about you, Mr. Are you the dean, the owner? What? What's your role at the school? Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm Dean Thomas White with okay. uh, the Wish Hope Academy. Um, we're a school about inclusion. And we're very selective with the kids that we allow to come to the school. As, as you've heard, it is not a cheap school. It is definitely not a public school. It's a private school with a private set of rules and policies. And these policies are made aware and signed for and understood by all the parents and all the children before anything is put into place. So no one's put into awkward situations. So like you said they're right made here. aware and signed for by all the parents and all the students? So all the parents signed for this the second year? Ex well, they or signed. Or did you just change it? They signed that they understood the policies of inclusion, meaning that as our student body grows, we're going to have more and more and more transgender students. So well, we need a to policy of inclusion does, could mean a lot of things. It doesn't necessarily mean that. So is that what you're basing it on? Because you said we have a policy of inclusion. No, no ma'am. We're basing oh. it on a more of an umbrellaed term of our policy of inclusion where we, we, we got specific with it. We understood it wasn't my decision alone. You know, we have a board of trustees that is, that's teachers and parents that come together to make these decisions and that's what we all decided on. And we knew that this, these things are going to come up and that's why we have these forums so the parents can come in and we've selected these kids and we okay, know so the forum you had to discuss the policy the ch it was a change from the first year, was it not? That is correct. Okay, and so the forums that you held between the parents and the children before you changed the policy, was it before or after the policy was changed? Both. We had before forums to try to detail what the policy is and certain contingency plans on certain things that we might see happen if we were to put this into place. Were you made aware of the forum before? Yes and no, because there were so many forums, so many after-school meetings that I, I work. I don't have time to attend them all, so I didn't know the specific points they were discussing at each meeting. They didn't give you an agenda? I don't, I mean, I didn't read every single agenda. Coming up on Justice with Judge Maybelline. It's about to be a policy at every school in the nation. You're going to have to talk to your daughter and explain to her the facts of life. And later. The food came to the table and Julia knocked her wine glass over and it ruined my phone. We're back with the case of Laura Shello, who is suing Dean Thomas White for breach of contract. Okay, let me see your policy re with respect to tuition reimbursement. Uh, I don't have that with Do me. Do you too. have it? I don't have the policy related to, to tuition. I have the receipt here, which does not s explicitly state. No, it does. It, it does state non-refundable. So it's, let it's me here. See what it says. It's here on the receipt. You raised a specific concern. He addressed your concern. Yet now you still want your money back. My you, daughter was it was no longer happy. We pulled her from the school. We put her in public school. Okay. She was no longer happy. And guess at the what? That's going to become a policy at public school. And then what you gonna do? It's about to be a policy at every school in the nation. You're gonna have to talk to your daughter and explain to her the facts of life. If we had our money, if it wasn't being held hostage, your money is not being held Dean hostage. White, I could enroll my daughter in a Catholic school, but okay. I can't do that because okay. I can't, I can't and, get and my tuition back. you keep talking about, no, you can't, you can't get your money back because of the fact that I, I don't like to keep repeating myself, but you pay non-refundable, you knew the policy was changed before you put her in for the fall semester, you waited for three weeks, when you went to the meeting in the summer before school began, that was the time to address that issue. You let her go to school, I and now you want to pull her out. I did address the issue. Okay. You didn't ask then, can I have my money back from the early tuition I paid? Not at that point, no. Okay, but, the, but if you did like the policy, why wouldn't you raise that issue then? I don't want her there in September. She was happy at the school. We didn't want to disrupt. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. You keep going over your daughter. She was happy. I don't But your that parent, was before your the parent, incident. You were against it, you said. You didn't like the idea. So then the parent has to make a decision. But my daughter says, I don't want to leave. I don't want it to be disrupted. Now you're going with what the child says. What you going to do? The child or you? But you, 
But surely, Your Honor, you can understand not wanting to pull a daughter surely from I can the school that she's that, happy that, that at. I can surely understand that as a parent, we sometimes have to make decisions that our children don't like. And no, I wouldn't want to make my children unhappy. But if I have to, I do, which I did. When my child didn't want to leave Hollywood High School playing football and we moved outside the city, did I want to pull him? No. When he wasn't going to class, you getting pulled. You can like me or not. I'm not doing that. I'm not taking that drive. We make decisions all the time as parents that our children don't like and that, that hurt, especially a 13-year-old. She doesn't know what's best. She knows what she doesn't like. But and it's up to us to educate our children and to bring them in and to help them understand life. Life. And it can't always be the way we want it, and it can't always be what we like. That's not reality. I understand that. Okay. But, but Judgment for the defendant. Judge Maybelline has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim has been dismissed. I deserve a refund. This policy was implemented after I paid tuition. This is only the beginning of your problems. Our education platform hasn't changed. We hope you and your daughter find a place where you can feel accepted. Coming up. The food came to the table and Julia knocked her wine glass over and it ruined my phone. Network featuring dynamic judges and live legal programming. Well, we're not oh, at your school, we're in my courtroom. Unique court shows. Where is any information about the company? Live legal news. That's what you should have done. And a commitment to justice. Either you tried or you did it. The next generation of court programming in one dynamic network. Justice Central. You're watching Justice Central. Stay tuned. You're watching Justice with Judge Maybelline. Heather King is suing Julia Thomas in the amount of $2,300. Ms. King claims Ms. Thomas pressured her to put her cell phone in a phone stack during their dinner, which led to a broken phone and a lost job. Ms. Thomas claims she was just trying to have a peaceful dinner with Ms. King and is not responsible for the accident or the plaintiff getting fired. In the matter of Heather King versus Julia Thomas, Ms. King is suing Mr. Thomas, uh, Ms. Thomas for $2,300 for wage loss and damage to one of those wonderful little creatures called a smartphone. Um, tell me about it in a phone stack case. Tell me. So, Your Honor, Julia and I um, have been friends for a long time. My name is Heather King. Julia and I have been friends for a long time since undergrad, and we went to dinner um, recently, and she has this thing called a phone stack where we have to stack our phones in the center of the table during our meal so that we can connect with one another. Um, this is something that she likes to do. And, um, but for me, it is difficult because of the job that I had at the time, which was very, very stressful and, and required me to be, be available to my phone at all times for my boss. And so the night that we had dinner, she asked me to place my phone in the center of the table. And I did not want to. I let her know that I was expecting a call from my boss. It was very, very important. I had to pick an important client up from the airport. And she and our four other friends just kept pressuring me and kept pressuring me. So finally, I put the phone in the center of the table. We started to have a lovely meal. It was Chinese food, family style. The food came to the table and Julia knocked her wine glass over and it ruined my phone. It totally shut my phone off. It wouldn't come back on. I had to go to two different phone stores to try to find a new phone, which she did not offer to pay for to replace, knowing that it was very important to me for my job. By the time that I got my phone handled and got a new phone, my boss called, she was very upset, the client came to the airport early, I missed it, I lost my job, and my mind, my whole, all of my, everything was lost in that phone. Um, and so today I am suing her for damages to my phone and also for the weeks that I was without work um, because I had to go search for a job and now I'm a waitress. Um, well, how many weeks were you without work? Three weeks. And what kind of work did you do before? <gasps> Before that, I was a fashion assistant um, to a very pro prominent fashion designer in Los Angeles, and I loved my job. It was my dream job. And unfortunately, that night, everything ended for so, me. And how much did the phone cost? The phone cost $500, Your Honor. 
coming up. The wine tipping over is an accident. Things happen. When you're putting your phone in the center of a table, you know there's food, there's drink, anything could happen. We're back with the case of Heather King, who is suing Julia Thomas for property damage and lost wages. Your idea to phone stack, right? Right. Your insistence to phone stack. Well... Based upon what I read in the pre-case, you're the leader of this pack. And um, everybody follows your lead. I am the one who organized the dinner, um, but all of our other friends were saying that Heather should finally put her phone down and pay attention to the people she was with. Since she wasn't going to have to report to her boss for several hours, she should have some time to herself. The wine tipping over is an accident. Things happen. When you're putting your phone in the center of a table, you know there's food, there's drink, anything could happen. As but, it's your, but you know that, and it's your rule to put it in the center of the table. Right. You have an accident, damaged her phone. She doesn't have a phone, doesn't have a job, and you think you, it's just an accident. Right, because... Because you should have had it on the top. Because things happen. So if you had damaged Mary's phone or Susie's phone or any of the other person's phone that had been on top, mm -hmm. you would have had the same feeling? No, because I think they're all reasonable people and we wouldn't be in the courtroom right now because they would have known that things happen to phones, they would have had a warranty on it, or they would have sucked up the cost and realized that it was their mistake to not insure something so important to them. Well, I'm going to let you suck up this cost. <laughs> it's your mistake. But not to spill wine. It's, not, it's your mistake not to be careful since you do things so perfectly all the time and hold your glass in a manner such that you don't spill it on the phone because you know all those phones are there. I should not it, be responsible for well, three weeks of her pay. Well, maybe you think that you shouldn't be, but I disagree. For three weeks of her pay. Well, are you going to pay for that phone? Judge Maybelline's verdict when justice with Judge Maybelline returns. It was an accident. And when things are an accident, sometimes you have to pay for it. Well, if I have an accident and break something at someone's house, usually I'll replace it. That's what most reasonable people do. If remedy. I break your glass, I'm going to replace it. Your Honor, we try to remedy the situation. I offer oh. to drive her to get to the, to the new store to get a phone. That means I, she got to pay we, for a new phone. That doesn't change her, that. Well, we also told her mm -hmm. that she could either check her voicemail from our phones or if she could send her boss an email from okay, our phone. Okay, here's what you are. You want things done your way. You want to be in total control of how things should go and what people should or should not do. You're playing God that she shouldn't be on the boss. And now I hate people talking on the phone when we're having dinner, too. I really do. But you also have a choice. Don't eat with them. That she could have not them. eaten with me. Yeah, but you have a choice, too. I hate that. I get that. I think it's rude. I think it's inconsiderate. But this woman had a particular incident. I think she could have kept her phone and left it on vibrate and then stepped out of the room when she received the phone call. But in compliance with her friends, you got to learn not to take the pressure of friends, um, she did that. You had the accident and spilled it and caused the damage to her phone. You pay for that. But I'm not paying for three weeks that she went Oh, you know what? Work. I wasn't going to order you to do it, but now that you're telling me what you're not going to do, yes, you are. Pay back, too. Judgment for the plaintiff. Judge Maybelline has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant is ordered to pay $2,300. I'm sorry it had to come to this, but you knew what that job meant to me. I'm glad you lost your job. You didn't have a life, and now you'll have one, but I won't be in it.